All right, so I'm back at it. I'm out at the mill today. Um, and today I'm going to install a laser level. And I've already captured some video that I'll add in here to uh, show you how I put it all together. But basically it'll just put a red line down the length of the log at the same height as the blade. Just like you would, you know, like on a chop saw or any other thing that has a laser line on it. And, um, and uh, so I'll, I've kind of custom made it, custom rigged it a little bit, so kept it on the cheap. Uh, but I'll show you more about that. And I'll uncover the mill and get to work on this. So just wanted to let you know what's going on. Welcome to CWC Projects. Hope you uh, enjoyed today's video. All right, so what I've done is uh, I've set up a, a 4x4 on the track and um, brought the mill up to it and got the blade exactly on it. Um, it's actually really three and a half inches. Uh, but anyway, it's you know straight all the way down through. I've kind of held my laser level in a spot that I think is going to work. Um, and so I'm going to put a hole in here and mount it. <laughs> and then I've got, I made a little aluminum sleeve to put my battery pack in. And I'm going to mount that right up here so that I can easily switch it on and off whenever I want right there. And of course, as you saw, or, there's a little on off switch right here. So. This is, you can see that okay. This kind of goes all over the place. You can get it up, down, left, right. So it'll let me get, get it right where I need it. I'm gonna just start it somewhere for now and then we'll readjust as we go along. But uh, we'll see how this works. It's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm sure I'll have to keep tweaking it a little bit, but I've got it pretty close right now. I'm going to tighten it up some more, and then I'm going to screw the, um, the little plate that I made. Put that up here as well, too, so that's in a nice, safe place. And then make sure the wire's neatly out of the way, but free enough that I can easily open the door and close it back when I need to. Uh, I didn't really want to put it out on the end here just because I was afraid. I guess there's this thing sticks out enough, but I was afraid of uh, bumping it when it came by. Um, so hopefully that's a good spot for it, but we'll we'll try it. All right, so uh, I need to clean tie up the wiring a little bit. Right now I just stuck it on here, but it turned out really well, very clean. So there's the laser mounted and um, adjustments on both sides, so I can dial in as I need to. There's the aluminum uh, casing that I made that I can just drop and pull this right out and put a. 9 volt battery in it whenever I need to, and I also easily reach the switch right there, which turns in the laser. So you can see it's shining across the board. Alright, so I've thrown a log up on there. I don't know if you can see it very well. Very hard to see the line, I guess. Um, but there's a laser line there, and it shows me, which is really interesting because it's way up here. And then it ends up coming across about here. So that shows me the junk that I've got to cut off to get to some good surface area. So we'll give it a try, see what happens, see how close it is with the laser. All right, so not bad. I marked just a little above the line. There. And 
there. Where the other one went, maybe I cut into it. So it's it's not bad though. I've got it pretty good, and uh, I was able to tell where where I was going to cut. I like it. Just a couple uh, last things I want to show you. The uh, I, I brought the, the saw all the way down and saw where the blade would end, <clears throat> which is probably about half inch beyond this, or excuse me, the back of the blade. So I, I brought the uh, bandsaw all the way down, and the back of the blade ends about here. So I put about three quarters of an inch back behind that. I put a line, and that way I know any logs I lay out here they need to. Uh, they need to be behind this line or the blade won't make it all the way through. Um, another thing, this was one of those I got saw very helpful things from uh, sawing with Sandy. Um, he, uh, he made a great recommendation and I followed it um, of marking these guys because the last thing you want to do is hit one of these with your band. So um, that way I know that when I've got this in here and I've got it set at three and a half inches that I don't want that thing to go any lower than three and a half inches. Um, I'll show you up here. So I don't want that thing to come uh, any lower than three and a half inches, right? So uh, there is actually about a half inch difference. So where I put that one, um, I just want to make sure I had at least a half inch between the blade and the post so I can get the post as close as I can for cutting um, more shallow wood. Uh, also, I s measured and set the blade and set this. This is a magnetic strut, but I put a marker on here um, so that I would know if the magnet moves at all. I can kind of see and I'll know that um, I need to be careful because I don't want the blade to go down too far. And then I also put a marker across this entire piece because if I get to that point, that's just about as low as I want the blade to go altogether. So, um, in, inch and a half. So if you need to cut something, um, you have to put another board underneath it. Uh, if you need to cut it, you know, less than an inch and a half, or really probably less than two inches, uh, it's a good idea. You just double it up, and and that way you uh, keep the the blade up away from that. And uh, let's see. I think that's the last thing. So the laser turned out real well. Worked very well. Um, did exactly what I needed it to do. And so just a matter of I'll probably have to check it once in a while, but um, when I, you know when I turn it on, you can you can even see right across it's like the laser's hitting right on the blade, so you know it's right at the same height as the uh, as the blade is. Uh, but you just need to make sure it stays level all the way down through. So um, the way I did that, as you saw, I threw a, a four by four on there, and then kind of moved it forward and back and made sure it stayed right on. So getting this. The trick seemed to be getting the laser itself right at the, the center of it, right at the exact as, where the blade is, because otherwise if you go a little high, when you go down to the end, it dips, and when you come back, so it, it wasn't ever, you know, I had to get the center of the laser right with the center of the blade, and that way anywhere that it casts on the wood ended up uh, staying all the way, even all the way down, otherwise it would kind of go up or down, so I guess it's probably obvious, but figured I'd mention it since hopefully this is helpful. So last few things, um, 
One is, uh, again, credit to Song with Sandy. I mean, you might, you might as well just watch his videos too because uh, that's where I saw him. He had a different laser, a different setup, but same idea. So he put the laser on. I like that idea. I went on Amazon. Um, the laser itself was really like 19 bucks, although uh, I got I bought it with the uh, mount and a an adapter, uh, kind of like a transformer. So it was that was 36 dollars, and then this piece was five dollars for the battery holder, and it happened to have the exact right plug on it. And then um, you saw me solder in the uh, the step down transformer in here to go from nine volts to five, and that works really beautifully. So that's in there. And um, that was it. So what at 36 plus 10, 46 dollars, um, and then some labor, of course, to uh, to solder and put it together. But it turned out great. I really like it. I'm happy with it. it makes a big difference. Um, in fact, this uh, this uh, clamp that holds your board in place, I kick the it, when I know the blade's getting down low, and I'm concerned it might be too low. And in fact, I did it today. I flipped the laser on and I could see that it was just going to go above the top of the clamp so I adjusted and moved the clamp down lower. I, I wanted that you know three quarters of an inch buffer zone. Um, and another thing that happened along the way was I didn't have something clamped in well enough and it kind of jumped which was a pain so um, I'm still, that thing's kind of tricky still for me. I'm just trying to figure out how to use it well. I think partly because I don't have ground clearance I may dig out down in there but it's always hard to move it around down there. So. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, my second installment of the uh, Woodland Mills. And it's uh, really nice. I like it. I'll, I'll obviously do a lot more videos on it, keep you posted. Uh, it's, I'm learning. Uh, just figure out how to do the, you know, figure out the best way to, you know, rotate your log and, and, and get the most boards out of it and what type of boards you need and want. So today I did, um, I think it was poplar. So uh, I cut up some poplar, which is a little bit harder than the, uh, like a little bit harder wood than the um, cedar, but certainly not as hard as like oak or um, some other trees. So I do have some oak logs. Uh, I've got a bunch of different logs over here that I'll be cutting up. And then I've got my, some of my really big ones <laughs> are still up by the driveway from when that really big tree fell down. So eventually I'll, I'll do a little bit of everything on here and show you what it looks like. So anyway. Well, uh, thank you for joining me on TWC Projects. Hope you enjoyed this today. And uh, stay well, stay healthy, enjoy the outdoors, and um, we'll see you soon. Bye now.